In my previous video, I mentioned towards the end that I was able to uh, use complex numbers only to, um, to re-implement Yonel Dinyu's um, ether circulation around a wire, and I was also able to implement, or at least I figured I would be able to implement the torus knot. And so I spent a bit of time on this on the weekend, and I was in fact able to implement the torus knot quite easily, as I suspected, using only complex numbers. Now the, the goal of my research is to do, um, to do everything using only complex numbers and, uh, and not uh, invoke the quaternion as, um, as one needs to do for standard computer graphics. So for standard computer graphics, if you want to rotate an object in 3D space about an arbitrary uh, vector, about an arbitrary um, axis, then you need uh, quaternions. But for doing um, ether circulation, for simulating ether circulation, i.e. the ether circulation uh, around the wire in Jan Aldinu's model, and the uh, what I am calling the torus knot model, um, you only need complex numbers. So uh, first of all, I want to show you um, the code Okay, so I developed a, just a tiny class. Uh, I call it the Ohm Particle because that is the name of my website, uh, and the Ohm turns up quite a bit. And so, just for fun, I am calling my class uh, the Ohm Particle. And so, I am going to be using this class to develop my Ohm Particle model. So we've got a bunch of functions. We've got we can set up a complex number into a matrix. We can set up the complex conjugate into a matrix. We can multiply the two by two matrices together, and we can add the two by two matrices together. And um, for completeness, I've added the calls to the quaternion uh, functions. Uh, you know, because uh, they are related, obviously, to the complex numbers. So here is the function that actually generates the torus knot. And uh, so basically what I do is I instantiate my own particle class. I also instantiate something I call a point vector. And this is really just a a list of points that I'm going to generate to generate the torus knot. Now to generate the torus knot I need three matrices, one to contain the point, one to contain the rotation, and one to contain the result. And so uh, and so this chunk of code here basically what it does is it calculates my delta which is the space between the points on my torus knot structure. So uh, one cycle is 2 pi. I want to put 2,000 points. I want to use 2,000 points to, um, to map out my torus knot. And so then I calculate my delta. And then I define the number of turns around the torus and the number of turns through the torus. Now these are hard coded in a previous version of my software. I had these on slider bars, but, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to hard code them and I'm going to give them arbitrary values. And then I'm going to define the inner radius. Now the inner radius is the radius of the uh, circle going through the torus. Okay, so this would be the, the I call it the inner radius. And then the outer radius is the radius around the circle. And so I'm using, uh, this is a unit circle with a radius 1.0. And the outer radius is arbitrary. I'm choosing 1.618 um, only for fun. So then what we do is we integrate through, we integrate through the phase. Okay, so we integrate through, so for each point on the phase, so the phase would be the phase of a circle, so one degree, two degrees, three degrees, etc., um, plus or minus the delta that we calculated up here. Okay, so now I'm going to generate my uh, x, y, z coordinates. 
Now I want to go back to this here because as you can see the two-dimensional numbers can only um, can only operate in two dimensions at a time. So you would think that uh, complex numbers aren't useful for three dimensions uh, at all but in fact when I gave it some thought I realized that I could use the uh, complex numbers um, I can use the complex numbers for uh, X and Y and I could use it for X and Z and I could also use it for Y and Z so I can split up the rotations for the X and Y and the X and Z and uh, that is in fact what I do and so uh, for the first uh, to calculate the inner circle the circle of, uh, of turns through the torus okay turns through the torus that I'm going to call that the XY so in the XY plane I'm calculating the turns through so what I do is I set up my um, I actually um, increment my x by the inner radius which is 1 so I give the inner circle a radius of 1 okay and then y is 0 and I'm going to calculate the points around the circle using the complex numbers okay so for each point in the phase of the circle I am going to set up the complex point I'm going to set up the rotation matrix um, using my turns through parameter and multiplying that by the phase and I plug in the cos and the sine. So what this basically does is sets up a matrix that looks like this. So the cosine is on the forward diagonal and the sine is on the backward diagonal and the cosine, uh, the forward diagonal has the same sense and the backward diagonal has the opposite sense. So that is basically what this is doing. I'm setting up um, this matrix right here. Okay, and then I do a mul complex multiply. I use my complex multiply, which is a 2 by 2 matrix multiplication. I multiply the point by the rotation, and I get out the result. And since I put in x and y, I have to pull out x and y. Okay. And then I go to the next step. So in this case, what I'm going to be doing, so in this case, I was uh, plugging in X and Y, and my orbit was about the Z axis, okay? So in this next step here, I'm going to be plugging in Y and Z, and uh, so the orbit is going to be about the X axis. Okay, and so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the result that I got from the previous step, and I'm going to uh, increment it by the outer radius. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the original circle, which uh, has a radius of 1. Okay, I'm taking the original circle, and I'm going to shift it uh, like that. And then I'm going to orbit about this axis, which I'm calling X. And so you can see if I orbit about this axis, you can imagine it's going to rotate sort of, you know, in, into the page and then out of the page. And you're going to get a torus structure. So that's basically what this code is doing. This shift here is doing this. Okay, it's going like that. And uh, then uh, I set up my rotation, and then this time I use the turns around. So this is going to turn around the torus, not through the torus. And I'm using the same phase as before. So um, the turns around are multiplied by the phase, and then I use, I use the 2 by 2 matrix version of Euler's formula to uh, do the rotation in the y z plane and that is what i'm doing uh, right here so when you do the multiply it is doing the rotation in the y z plane and then i get my result out into the y and z component of the three-dimensional space so the first step gets me <clears throat> x and y the second step gets me y and z 
and then I plug that into my point vector which is basically going to be my list of points that I use to generate the the uh, torus the tube for the torus knot and so you'll see here actually you'll see I'm plugging in zyx and that is so that my program will uh, display the torus in an orientation that I like so when I run this program, when I run this program, what I get is the beautiful torus knot. And of course, this looks an awful lot like the ferrocell image um, that, of course, uh, has these lines that go in, in crisscross each other that uh, many of you have probably seen. So here is my torus uh, knot, and uh, it's got a hole in the middle it's got a hole in the middle because um, because I set the outer radius to be bigger than the um, than the inner radius. And when the outer radius is bigger than the inner radius, you get a hole in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to 0.618, and let's see what happens. So here is the torus knot with the uh, outer radius uh, less than the inner radius. And what you get here, what you see here is when you do that, you get this sort of knot in the middle. You get kind of it tied up in, into a knot in the middle. And so uh, that is, uh, these are the two configurations of the torus knot. I'm sure you've seen this before in my uh, previous videos. But um, anyways, I just wanted to show you this quickly. Um, just want to show you how simple it is, how simple this implementation of the torus knot is. Um, using complex numbers, it's fairly straightforward. All you have to do is divide up the x, y, and the, you know, the y, z components. And uh, you can use just complex numbers. You don't need to use quaternions to do this functionality. And I do the same trick with Yonel didn't use either circulation around the wire. So I can apply the same trick. I, I, I call it a trick, but it's an implementation. I apply the same method to Yonel didn't use um, ether circulation, and I can get quite complex behaviors uh, without having to invoke quaternions at all. And so, um, so this is special, okay, this uh, complex numbers, as I've been saying all along, I, I'm going to actually take this and copy it over here, okay, because uh, this is the polar version of the complex number. So this is the generalized version of the complex number. This is the um, usually referred to as the polar version of uh, its Euler's formula, basically in two by two matrix format. Uh, some people might call this a complex number. I prefer to call it a two dimensional number because that is in fact what it is. Uh, I prefer not to use the terms terms of real and imaginary. I would prefer to use the terms forward and backward diagonal. The forward diagonal has the same sense. The backward diagonal has opposite sense. And this is, you know, basically complex numbers in a nutshell. So I think it's really important to understand that complex numbers are, are not, you know, uh, these mystical creatures where it has an imaginary component that doesn't exist. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, imaginary numbers, they don't exist. Well, they do exist. They exist as the backward diagonal of a two by two orthogonal matrix. Okay, this is an important point. An orthogonal matrix is a matrix where when you multiply the matrix by its transpose, and in this case the transpose is the complex conjugate, when you do that you get um, you get ones on the forward diagonal. So when you do that you get this guy here. So when you multiply the um, the com a complex number by its complex conjugate or its transpose, you get the identity matrix, the real identity matrix. And so uh, that's basically the point I want to make. Uh, this You could easily implement this. This is not rocket science. It's quite, it's far away from rocket science. It's quite simple, mathematically uh, extremely simple. 
And so, uh, so that's it. Um, I will try to get my code. Uh, I want to give you my own particle class, which is super simple. And then you can, and I will give, put up some example codes at some point, probably not right away, but within the next couple of days. And so that's all I wanted to say for today. Hopefully this is a much shorter video than my previous ones. And I know a lot of you are really are getting a little bit tired. You're getting a bit tired of the math. Um, but I swear to, uh, to the gods of the universe that um, you really only need to know about the two by two matrix form of complex numbers uh, to understand my um, approach to the ether, which I refer to as the ether circulation model. So I don't need quaternions. All I need are basically these two guys to, uh, to simulate and to um, animate uh, the ether circulation model. So that is it for today.